Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Brown Vintner at Baca Wines. Welcome to Happy Hour from Hall Walt and Baca Wines, the show where great minds drink alike. Here I am at our Healdsburg Winery and Tasting Room. You can see our gorgeous Dry Creek Vineyards right behind us. We have an awesome show for you today. I've got actor Tom Everett Scott that you know from so many different acting roles, including That Thing You Do, that he first became a breakout star for. Before he joins us, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on in our neck of the woods. We obviously wrapped up harvest. You can tell our vines um, don't have any fruit on them anymore. We're vinifying our wine right now um, and um, things are going really great. This year has been a small harvest, but a really awesome one. And um, we're gearing up for Thanksgiving and the holidays over here. We've got a Thanksgiving set um, that's on sale. You can get it shipped to you if you order it by the 22nd of next week. So be sure to check that sale out because you don't want to miss it. Well, without further ado, I'd love to invite Tom Everett Scott to join me out here. Hey, Tom. Hi there. How are you doing? How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Good. Well, I think we should probably cheers. What do you think? Yes. Let me um, let me just get my my bottle here. Oh, and, perfect. Uh, let, me, let me pour some here. Cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. I'm up in Northern California. You're in Southern California. <laughs> it's so amazing that through technology we can be together amazing amazing mm -hmm. truly so here we are baca Zinfandel. yes, yes right it's one? our i spice Zinfandel. and actually today is national Zinfandel day so happy oh. national Zinfandel day to perfect you. timing i know it is <laughs> um so i know that you just wrapped up a project um shooting for amazon can we when can we expect to see that you know, this is the problem with these Hollywood shows. <laughs> you don't know exactly when they'll come out, but but it will be soon. Uh, we just finished um, production. We just finished shooting mm, all of it. Mm -hmm. They're going to be there editing and fixing the sound and the picture, and it'll be ready to roll. I think seven episodes uh, for season one. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, awesome. it's very exciting. Yeah, so it's cool. called The Summer I Turned Pretty, and it's uh, based on a young adult novel series by Jenny Han. Fantastic. Oh, well, be sure to check that out, everyone. Um, I know you've been in so many different genres. You know, you've acted on stage, you've acted in film, on television. Now you've network television and streaming. And this is a streaming show. Like, what do you think the major differences are between TV, film and, and theater? And, and, and what is your favorite medium? Well, I mean, I started out doing theater. And mm -hmm. I will always love it. I will always want to go back to it just because mm -hmm. it's kind of like this um, good for the soul medium mm -hmm. for, for acting. Uh, but I will say, you know, my first film with Tom Hanks, that thing you do, it was such a huge experience. Mm -hmm. It was such a great uh, dream come true experience and immediately opened the door for me. There we are. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it immediately opened the door for me to, to get into film and TV. Um, mm -hmm. And I had been doing a little bit of TV already before I met Tom Hanks. I had done like an episode of Law and Order. I had done a couple of recurring episodes on a show called Grace Under Fire, which was mm -hmm. a sitcom back in the Roseanne days. And um, all the different mediums are great. I, I love acting. It doesn't really matter where. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah. I would have been happy doing the Renaissance Fair back in Rhode Island uh, that I did as a kid. Uh, luckily I, I do something that pays a little bit better than that. Just a little bit more. Yeah. Just a little bit better than just a, a leg of mutton. <laughs> and uh, so, so to answer your question, um, the big, well, some of the big differences I've always noticed is that when you're shooting a film, you usually have more time to, you know, take your time for really beautiful shots and, and locations and all those mm, kinds of things. And then right. TV has a little bit of a quicker pace and I don't prefer one over the other. Um, they're, they're both great. Got it. That makes sense. Is there a role over your history? I mean, you've been a really prolific actor. You've been in so many projects. Um, is there one role in particular that you'd say you identify the most with? There's been so many great roles that I've mm -hmm. had the, you know, fortune, great fortune to mm -hmm. play. Um, I would say that when Andrea Savage approached me to play her husband and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the, oh, yeah, we got the, a picture uh, from that there. Ah, the uncompleted season three. Um, oh, gosh. Um, I didn't even know you guys filmed a season three. You mean you started it but didn't that, release that it? That right there is from episode one of season three. We got um, several, oh. we got a few episodes into the season and then COVID happened. And uh, oh. that show is 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 done and we'll never yeah. see the, that season three, which is a shame. What a travesty. Really? Who knows? Though? Who knows? Maybe we will. Maybe somebody yeah. will swoop in and, and put it on. Uh, let's keep hope alive. That would be nice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
but anyway, so I think when she approached me and she said, please play my TV husband. And we hadn't ever met before, but uh, it was one of the most beautiful, um, flattering letters I'd ever received from someone, an actual oh, letter wow. Yes, wow. in this age of the digital uh, emails and all that. And then we met at a diner and she gave me the 20 page pilot that she had written and she showed me some stuff that she had done. And I was just like, this lady is hilarious. And this role is perfect mm -hmm. for me. It's perfect because I live this life. I live with a woman. My mm -hmm. wife, you know, is hilarious. And I, I was like, if I, gosh, if I can't play this role, I should just quit acting. <laughs> so I would say that, that, yeah, Mike represents who I am. Well, and I have to say that I think, I, I think you hit on something that I've noticed in many of your roles that I feel like you play people that it just seems so realistic so much of what you play you. and 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 I mean I, I know that's a sign of good acting so obviously you're a great actor but I think that's what's so enjoyable about watching you on screen is it doesn't seem like you're acting it just seems real well so, give me a I, chance I could definitely um you know <laughs> screw that up give me a chance uh, I think yeah. that I appreciate that thank you for saying that I I think a lot of that I owe to believe it or not I owe it to Tom Hanks who was my mm -hmm. first director and mm -hmm. he gave me a lot of great advice um invaluable what did advice. he say I, now we all want to know well uh let me where do i start uh <laughs> yeah. there's so many great things and um, you know be on time know your lines just some really great work ethic things that he told me you know you will never be late um that is not mm -hmm. part of the scenario and um you know he's just been such a great great uh mentor for me over the years mm -hmm. uh but one of the things that he said i think what i needed to hear at that time when i was so young and starting out and nervous about how i would come across he said you don't need to do much. You think you're not interesting. Mm -hmm. You feel like you need to do more. You do less. Less is more. Mm -hmm. Less mm -hmm. is more. And and it's true. The camera really does see everything. So that was a good acting. Well, that makes a lot of sense, certainly compared to theater where you have to do such large gestures, right? And so yeah. was, or do you think that's true on theater as well that you need to do less? No, no, no. I think theater, yeah. it's true. I mean, it also depends on how big the, the audience, the house is, mm -hmm. you know, if you're playing to people in the back and they're way in the back, you want everybody to have, you know, hear you and see you and, and feel you. And um, in a smaller house, maybe you could be a little bit less mm -hmm. demonstrative, but like, but it's true. Theater, you're, you're acting with your whole body the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, mm -hmm. you know, films, you, you act a lot through close ups and you can do, do less with your face. Well, it just seems like you have probably the most fun job in the world. I can't imagine getting to, I think you wrote in one of your posts recently, you just get to go pretend every day. And um, how wonderful to be able to be so creative and make a living out of it and be successful like you. That's that's, that's really amazing. <laughs> yes. If you do what you love, you never work a day in your life is what they say. Um, mm -hmm. they, I am very fortunate that I can act because I can't do much else. Uh, <laughs> so I'm happy that I'm doing something that I can do. And um, I would say that like at times it's not the greatest job in the world. If I knew that there was as much cold water involved in acting. What do you mean? What kind of cold water? You know, having to swim in the ocean or, oh. uh, you know, at a time when you wouldn't, you wouldn't go in the ocean. Right. Like at six in the morning. Yeah. Or when the lighting is perfect, but the water temperature is freezing <laughs> and uh, you still got to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, all kinds of like, um, uncomfortable situations that look great but feel horrible well gosh yeah that does i never thought about that but i'm sure there are some very like not fun parts of making these beautiful you know <laughs> projects that we all see it's all it's all great it's all gravy i uh i certainly can't complain but yeah uh, i don't think anyone watching this is feeling sorry for you necessarily not at but... all not at all they're like you're <laughs> drinking wine come on yeah yeah you said you had to get in some cold water once yeah <laughs> that's pretty funny um that's the worst of it so yeah well i think that you've just played some phenomenal roles i know you mentioned um i'm sorry which i was a huge fan of hopefully that gets picked back up and we can see the third season um yes, thank you and you mentioned that thing you do. I think we brought up a picture before, but there's one other picture we have um, about you guys getting back together for the platinum um, Ooh, yeah. album that it became, which that must have been a really exciting moment. Hanging. Yes, it was very exciting. That was that was actually during COVID as well. Um, so that's me and Jonathan Sheck holding up the uh, the album there. Right, the I recognize album. him. And that is Gary Getzman, who is pro producer extraordinaire and uh, Tom Hanks's partner. Oh, at, got at it. So Tom and Gary worked, you know, on that movie, but then after formed their production company and called it Playtone after the record company. Oh, and that I didn't too. realize because that was Tom Hanks's first film. Is that right? His, it was his first direct. Yeah. Excuse his, me. Directing. Yes. Obviously, sure. he was in lots of. Stuff Obviously, before. he was in other stuff. Before that. <laughs> I think I've seen him uh, in something before. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, so, yes, he he um, formed his own company after that and have they made um, Big Fat Greek Wedding and all these HBO series like Band of oh. Brothers and Earth to the Moon and 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 many, many, many other great films. So um, and they're great. And they're right here in, in Santa Monica. And I, I get to have lunch with them every once in a while and go catch a Dodger game. And uh, we've you know just had this wonderful experience since the day we started where we've become part of this Playtone family. And uh, so I'm very fortunate that, for that. So that was at the offices and we, we we got our platinum records, which is like beyond like, come on. Like I, I, have a platinum album. I had nothing to do with that. Making that's of that so album. incredible. And for and for it to have come from a film, no less, you know, that's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. <laughs> so can you so what goes into getting a platinum label? It's just it's that it's sold a certain number of singles yes. or a certain number of records. That's right. That's right. And we actually say it in that thing you do as we're walking up this hallway we're leaving the state fair and we're going off to la and uh we're talking about the numbers and i can't you know what right now i can't remember but i think it's like 500 copies is a gold record maybe like you know 500 million copies or whatever it is. you know some mm -hmm. large number mm -hmm. you know and and you reach a certain number and you wow. get a, a platinum record and i and that people are screaming at us right now the exact numbers and i'm sure yeah and we can't we see don't know it. What they are. <laughs> um that's incredible um i do remember that scene when you guys went to la at the end of the film um that was really a great movie i really enjoyed Thank that you. and actually i need to go back and rewatch that because it was just so there's so many great yeah. I feel like there's not as many great films being made these days. Um, you know, there's there's been a you know shift in the in what's been made. I mean, that was a twenty five million dollar budget movie studio film. They, they really don't make a whole lot of those anymore. They used to make a lot more. You know, the things that have taken the place of those have been these like um, limited mini series on HBO and, right. and things like that. You know, right. so we're getting the content. It's just not in the theaters as much anymore. Well, and Sadly. it seems like the 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 big budget films are more the. Um comic marvel. franchise and marvel yeah yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. sure that you have lots of comments about that but no they're great, no, they're other great. People you know, i've yeah. seen i've seen every single one of them i love them i have kids and and my son and i are just diehard marvel guys and um dc and all that so yeah, you know, yeah. they're a lot of fun to watch for sure um well i do have i do want to lead us through a little wine tasting and i do have a picture from when you did a little wine tasting on oh, your instagram let's see. um not really wine tasting, but I saw this on your Instagram and it made me so, it made me laugh out loud um, about the fact that you were drinking a glass of wine out of a plastic cup. Did it, did it taste okay? It was fine, but I mean, I was definitely complaining about, be, you know, <laughs> one of the perks of being an actor is you get to fly first class. And I was like, what? It's like the cup literally <laughs> says Coca-Cola on it. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. That made me laugh for sure. I, I think that the, the, the glass that you drink the wine out of actually does make an impact on what you drink. So I agree. I agree. I'm I, doing a little stemless uh, glass. Ooh, lovely. I have a stem, yeah. but Stem's good. Stemless is, stemlesses are good too. Um, I think the stem is helpful, right? Now you can answer this question for me mm -hmm. because you hold it by the stem so that you don't heat up the wine, right? Very impressive. That's right. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, it matters more for white wine than it does for red wine. But, you know, ideally, like in an ideal world, if you were a super wine geek, you would want your wine to be served at 55 degrees temperature. Um, and so, yes, you would you would want to keep it that temperature. Um, but okay. Okay. the flip side is as a wine warms up a little bit, you actually get to notice the flavors more. So I actually mm -hmm. like wine to be a little bit warmer than that. Um, well I um I stored this. I have a little wine fridge that nice. um yes that I got uh many many years ago. And the setting for this wine I think I put at seven degrees Celsius or fifteen. Excuse me, fifteen degrees Celsius, which is okay. That's probably about fifty five degrees um Fahrenheit. I would oh, assume. I think so. You double it up on 30. my Celsius um conversion you, rate, but. You, you double it and add 30. Every time I go to Canada, that's what I do. Oh, okay. So 30 plus 30 is 60. Okay. So yeah, that's about right. Close. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh, and we did just hear the platinum is a million labels. So million. Oh, so million gold labels. is 500,000. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So the wine that we're having today is called I Spy. So I started Baca Wines about three years ago. My parents and my family's been in the wine business for a long time. And I started Baca um three years ago to make wines from heritage vineyards around california so vineyards that have a lot of history 
And um, we're a family business. We love working with other family um, families that grow grapes that have a lot of history. This vineyard's up on Howe Mountain, which is a really prestigious area in Napa. That's a picture of the vineyard. And you can see the slope of the vineyard. Um, it's actually 2,400 feet above sea level, which is the highest um, vineyard that we work with. Does that matter the elevation? It does actually, because the higher you are, um, two things. One, if you're above the fog line like this is, it means you get a little bit more sunlight during the day um, mm. for longer. And then two, when you're on a hillside, um, the vines usually have to work harder because the soil is usually um, less nutrient dense. And so it's a little bit, usually rockier soil. So the vines have to you know, dig really deep to find the nutrients. And then it produces hardier grapes. And, and mm. it's kind of counterintuitive. Most people think you know, the more fertile the ground, the better the plant. But in grapes, you actually want to put a lot of stress on the vines because mm -hmm. the more stress they're under, then um, the more concentrated the fruit is of the that comes off the vine. That's so. an interesting tidbit. I didn't know that. Yeah, you want your you don't want to be stressed, but you want your wine to be very stressed, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't and make sense. Helps, and then it helps you relieve your stress. Exactly. And then it helps you relieve your stress. And I think that over the last 18 months, it's helped a lot of us relieve a lot of stress. So <laughs> it's perfect. Yes. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so this wine comes from that vineyard. It's actually um, a dry farmed vineyard, meaning that they don't irrigate it at all. And that um, it's not only sustainable because you don't have to, especially California is going through a drought. Um, sure. But it also means that um, the vines are self-regulating. So they have to actually figure out how to use their nutrients throughout the year and dig deep to find water reservoirs underneath the soil. Um, but I really love the concentration on this wine and it's got a lot of flavors of, um, for me, I get a lot of blackberry on it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's also in the middle of this pristine forest. So I get these sort of foresty smells like sage and black pepper. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, we might have a picture too of, you can see, here, this is a top how mountain. You can kind of see how there's just these densely wooded. Sorry, there are trucks driving behind me, but they're um, these dense uh, vineyards right behind. So dense cool. forest behind the vineyards. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm a big fan um, of this wine in particular, and we call all of our wines at Baca after games. So, oh, yeah. um, so games oh. are a big part of my family. We always grew up at holidays playing games and. Um, I just love the sense of joy that it brings to people. Um, yeah. So we call this I Spy after the children's game. Um, I Spy with my little eye. Um, because you can actually play I Spy with your kids or by yourself <laughs> when you're at the in the valley in Napa. And then looking up to try to find it. It's so high up that you have to play I Spy to find it. I Spy is such a great game. Play that uh, it, you know on road trips with the kids. That was always a way to pass the time. It, it helps. Yeah, for sure. Pass the time. Yes. I'm always looking for things to distract my kids. So you have to, you absolutely <laughs> have to. What are some of the other games that your wines are named after? So we've got Cat's Cradle. If you're familiar oh, with the the yeah, string the game, string game. Mm -hmm. Yes, also the Kurt Vonnegut novel. Yes. Um, and let's see what else we've got. We've got um, why can I not think of any? Oh, Tug of War. That comes from an older vineyard, and then Somersault, which is one of my favorites. Um, in addition to the Ice Spy. Um, which comes from a hundred year old vineyard over in Mendocino. Um, so we have quite a diversity. We have vineyards from down in Paso Robles all the way up to Mendocino. So it spans quite a lot of distance. That's very cool. Is BACA an acronym? Is that, a, or is that a, what is that? It actually, it's actually a Latin word for um, grape, for berry. If you oh. know the wine god Bacchus, it's the oh. Latin root of that. Oh. Yes. Um, and so I like the name, but I stacked it because I liked calling attention to California because um, ah. Zinfandel has a really rich history in California in particular. It's Present. the only grape that grows well um, for long periods of time, like Cabernet, Pinot. They all have to be ripped, ripped off after 20 years. Wow. Zinfandel, we have 150 year old Zinfandel vineyards um, in our state because they just grow really well in California. Amazing. What's the oldest Zin, zin that you have? The oldest one that we work with is a hundred, a hundred year old. Um, so the summer salt wine, but there are some out there that are 150 that we haven't quite got our hands on yet, but maybe one day. Wow. So yeah, that is, cool. that is so cool. It's, it's very cool. And I, I just think, you know, wine is this amazing thing that when it's made, when it's bottled, it captured this one moment in time, you know, we, 
we wrapped up harvest already. There's no grapes on these vines. But when we did harvest in August on that day, when it went into the bottle, it captured, you know, the whole terroir. So, you know, the soil, the climate, the grapes themselves, everything. And I just love it. Yeah. That is amazing. What a great little parallel to my world. I feel like uh, we capture moments too. You do. You do. Well, and I think also both of us are creating joy for people, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think more than anything, especially now, I think people really need joy, you know? Yes, for sure. Um, so so cheers to you and I for creating, for creating hey, joy for everyone. Yeah. Cheers to us. Yes, cheers to us. And those us. of you guys that enjoy it. Mm. This well, is delicious. It actually is. What would you pair this with? What What would you say? I think it would go with a lot. I think it would go. I think it's pretty versatile. It's it's got these smooth tannins. Um, so it's um, it's but it has the tannic structure that it could still pair with a piece of meat or something larger. But I would love this with say um, like a red pasta with just a really simple marinara sauce, but really delicious fresh tomatoes and parmesan, or um. Or I also think it would be really good with like a flatbread. Um, I'm a vegetarian, so, you know, I would put, you know, lots of different veggies on it. But I think it would it would pair with um, Definitely. a variety of foods. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have something fun in store for us, Tom. And I know you're a really good sport, so I appreciate you <laughs> in advance. So for those of you guys that know Tom, he is famous for a lot of roles, but lately he's played a few um, dads on television. So he was, he was in, I'm sorry. He, um, let's see some of your other roles. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Right. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I was going to say 13 Reasons Why. Yeah. And Finding You. Yes. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I'm forgetting. Oh, I did a movie called Parental <laughs> Guidance with Billy Crystal and Bette Midler and Marissa Tomei. Oh, I do remember that movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we don't have I'm to a dad. I'm, I'm, I am a dad in real life. I play a dad um, yes. on the show. And maybe, who knows, if I become a granddad, I'll just parlay this into granddad roles. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so our team put together a fun little game for us to play. Um, they're going to show us some quotes of five different TV dads. And then our job together is to guess... Who is it multiple it? choice? It is multiple choice. Thank yes. goodness. <laughs> okay. So, and the sea cucumber turns to the mollusk and says, with fronds like these, who needs an enemies? Oh, my goodness. Well, I feel like this one was very kind, actually. I think, I think it is, too. <laughs> is this A? I, I think it's A. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, okay. I agree. All it's, right, nice. Uh... We're one for one. Cheers. Okay. Got to celebrate Cheers. the small wins. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, it's a drinking game as well. <laughs> Are there any other kinds? This is the only kind. Well, just remember when children seem the least lovable, it means they need love the most. Well, just remember when children seem the least lovable, hmm. it means they need love the most. Wow. Gosh, that's challenging. I'm going to like rule out. I'm going to rule out full house. You are? Okay. I was going to say, I, that seems like something Danny Tanner would say. You don't think? Ooh. I mean, it seemed kind of like philosophical for, for that That's show. That's true. He's more want... practical giving, he wouldn't tell his kids that. And I think Family Matters is also too much of a comedy. I want to go with B, Alan Matthews in Boy Meets World. I was oh, wrong. I was bummer. wrong? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You really convinced me there because it does seem like something... That they would say on Boy Meets World, actually. But you made it sound like as soon as I said it wasn't that one and you said, don't you think? I was like, oh, she knows better than I do. <laughs> no, I don't. I really don't. But I, I did watch a lot of Full House. That's all I was thinking. But I should have just referred to you. You're very convincing, I have to say. Well, um, yes, you have to be in my line of work. Did you even get to watch these shows? I mean, you were probably so busy working. <laughs> I've seen some of these. Okay. Um, oh, these are movies, though. Tell her that you love her. You've got nothing to lose and you'll always regret it if you don't. I know this because I'm a Christmas nerd. Um, that's A. That's love, actually. Oh, it is? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Is that when they... Um, that's Liam Neeson. That... He's telling his son that he needs to tell his yeah. crush at school. Yeah. Cute. Okay. So I've always said that if my son thinks of me as one of his idiot friends, I've succeeded as a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume the last one, right? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I love Modern Family. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this, this game this game isn't as hard as I thought it might be. Um, no. 
And Phil Dunphy is maybe one of the greatest TV dads of all time. So good. And and I just think that he's he's so funny. And also the way that television show is shot, I just or it was pretty revolutionary, I think, when they first released it, right? In terms of Yeah, they were following TV. that. Yeah, they were following the the model, the office model of it's like a mock documentary. Right. Yeah. Um I love that show. I'm I'm bummed it's not on TV anymore, but he was he was particularly funny. Yeah. He was great. Okay. Okay, so yelling is the only part of being a father that I enjoy. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't think Al Bundy would have said that. Um, I mean, that is a funny line. That's such a good comedy line. That could be any one of these three guys. I don't think I ever watched All in the Family. Um, oh, man. I mean, uh, that that was such a great show. That was, um, I mean, that... Uh, yeah archie bunker i mean so such a classic what was that actor's name carol oh gosh i don't know i don't know i'm in i'm in actor jail for not remembering his name i think we'll get let you out of it but um okay i think this this might this should be you i think you should go for this one because i don't i don't know as well i don't think it's c that's my only thought okay it could be b it could be red foreman from that 70s show oh nicely done well done (laughs) Okay, so I guess we have one more. Um, the key to parenting is don't overthink it because overthinking leads to what were we talking about? You know who this is. <laughs> I this do? Is, is it do. Phil Dumpy again? No. no. You think it's Homer Simpson? I do. He, <laughs> I guess he was kind of a klutz. Okay, all right. <laughs> another great tv dad <laughs> i loved the simpsons i can actually i feel bad saying this i actually didn't realize it was still on tv until someone told me that the other day is it i mean it's just like one of the longest running most successful shows of all time incredible i got to go to a table read and uh they, fun. man it was so fun i did a movie uh yeah, with one of the yeah, I know, I know. There's several people in in the Simpsons world that I know, and so I got to go to the table read, and it was it was a great time. You know, it's funny. Well, that's incredible. That's really awesome that you did that. But I didn't think about it. You know, when I play this game, I'm thinking about these celebrities and shows, and but you actually probably know a lot of these people and people involved because you're you know in the industry. It's crazy. I mean, yeah. And uh, now that I've been in it this many years, you know, I, I, it's over 25 years of acting. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm amazed sometimes. I sometimes can't get past when watching a show, you know, the people I know. And then I'm like, no, wait, I, I got to pay attention to what's right. going on in the story. Right. Because you're thinking about them as a person rather than the character. Yeah, I'm wondering how they're doing and thinking about right. the last time we were together. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's really cool that you can do that. Really cool. Um. Well, Tom, it's been such a pleasure to talk with you. It's um, really fun to get to know more about you as a person and your characters that you play. I mean, obviously, um, you have a really su- successful home life and work life. And I'm just grateful that you gave us a little bit of time to try this wine together. Well, thank you. And I'm the grateful one because you guys have been very generous and giving me an education and also some tasty wine uh, well, good. Right for the holidays. Well, and next time, let's do this together in person. So you'll have to come out and visit us. We'd love to That would be wonderful. I'm going to take you up on that. Good. I look forward to it. And bring your, your, your daughter must be 21 then if she's finishing up college. So you'll have to bring her. You're absolutely right. So she will definitely want to (laughs) come. Cool. All right. Well, cheers, Tom. Cheers, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was really fun. Great to get to know Tom. And he was such a great sport playing the uh, American TV show game there at the end. Thank you guys all for tuning in. If you don't follow us already at Baca Wines, please be sure to. And also stay tuned for future shows where we have other really wonderful guests just like Tom Everett Scott. Well, cheers to your next adventure and the wine.